Joining us now here on In the Circle, she is the new assistant coach at Indiana, was the former All-American player in North Carolina, two-way player in North Carolina, but a, a friend of ours, uh, joining us for the first time on the pod, Kendra Kirkhoff, joining us here on In the Circle. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. How are you? Doing good. I'm still getting used to your new title there, Indiana mm -hmm. assistant coach. So let's start there. Uh, how did you end up at IU? What you thought was, you know, the next move in your career? Um, kind of just mutual people knowing each other. Um, Chelsea Barkley and coach Stanton have had a long history of relationship and she kind of reached out to me and was like, would you ever want to go home? And I was like, absolutely. Um, and that's kind of what started that. And then, um, just got in contact with coach Stanton and the rest is history. Obviously, you've done a great, obviously, great success at UNC Greensboro. Uh, let's first talk about that and that run there you had there with Coach Brenneman getting to the NCAA tournaments there. How hard was it to leave that and, and what you accomplished there? Uh, it, it was hard. Um, UNCG is very special to me. Um, the people there are awesome. The girls were amazing. Um, so, so making those phone calls to not only the pitching staff, but just the other coaches, um, that, that was very hard to do. Um, they hold a very special place in my heart. Um, I started my family there and it was just hard to, to leave such awesome people. So obviously you've been a pitching coach, but obviously at Indiana, you got Shanda Bell, who's been running the pitching staff. So what is your role on the staff and, and how has that gone in there as you've adjusted there with coach Stan and her staff? Yeah. So, um, I am fortunate. I get to do a little bit of everything. Um, Chanda has been awesome with just wanting collaboration in the bullpen and we get to talk pitching all the time. Um, I go to bullpens when I can, um, I kind of split time in bullpens and with, you know, hitting workouts. Um, so I'm very lucky that I, I get to do a little bit more hitting here, um, while still, you know, helping some with pitching, but they've been great. Just pure collaboration. Um, she's so open to just tell me what you've done, your ideas and just wanting new and different. Um, so they've been really awesome to work with and just kind of inviting me in to just, you know, challenging me to do things differently and just new ways of thinking. The fact you were a two way player, does that help you in that regard of being versatile uh, and not being, you know, just, you know, distinguished as just one aspect of the game that you could kind of uh, chip in on all multiple sides. Yeah, I think it definitely has um, just, you know, I was, honestly a better hitter than pitcher and so just understanding the offensive side you know helped me be um, a good pitching coach but I think this has just been fun to kind of get back on hitting and just I was very passionate about it as a player and uh, I've been passionate about pitching as a coach and so I just kind of get to blend the two which has been great. What's it been like getting to know the players? Oh, it's been great. These girls are awesome. Um, they were all super welcoming. Um, it's it's pretty cool. We have, you know, over half our team, I think, is from the state of Indiana. And then just getting back to my home state, I think it's just been a fun, you know, just just back to all the Hoosiers and love being a Hoosier. Um, but these girls are great. Um, they're super talented. They've been very open and just very easy to jump right in and and do what I'm doing. You mentioned, obviously, your home state, family ties in the state. Uh, was that also a big part of this move? Oh, for sure. Um, I think, you know, there's just something to be said about coming home and being part of just, you know, your flagship school. And, you know, just, I grew up watching IU and just being able to be a part of it now is really special to, to be able to say I'm, you know, representing my state and just wanting to make Indiana the best they can be. You, obviously this program's coming off an, an incredible, his big year making the NCAA tournament, making a regional final. Uh, what has it been like kind of with the returners? If you've noticed that, that they're, they've kind of, there's that high expectation that Coach Stanton's talked about, about bringing Indiana to the highest level there. What have you noticed from the returners? Obviously, you weren't there last year, but you could probably sense, you know, what they accomplished last year there. There's a little bit, a bit of confidence there in that fall ball. For sure. Yeah, there's a high standard at Indiana and these girls every day just working to to meet that standard and kind of exceed it. Um, so I think just going into practices, you know, like they're very they want to see results and they want to see the results go well and, and they're disappointed when it's not. So I think just their standard has elevated um, and just what they're trying to accomplish. And I think that's been fun just to work with a high standard of 
they they want to you know get back to regionals and beyond and they have high expectations for this season what has stood out for as you all as a staff about this group of players so far this year I mean, they've got experience. Um, I think, you know, having eight of nine starters back, like they they know what their goals are and what they want to accomplish. And and just we have the people who have been there and done it. Um, so just kind of we're excited to see where that takes them and just how we can lead to get us back to where we were last year and, and beyond. How do you balance? Obviously, you come in. There are things that they're doing that has been working. But at the same time, there are some things that you'd like, you know, do that you think could help them even more so how do you balance hey this is working let's not tinker too much with it but at the same time hey maybe we could tinker with this and even be better I think it's just you know the collaborative group like just lots of conversations you know like we liked how we did this last year so how can we build on it not so much changing things um just looking to build on what we do well um, so I think, you know, just we're very good at the conversations and having collaborative discussions about what we liked, what we, you know, are looking to maybe evolve. Um, and the girls have been super open to that. You know, they they want to be better and they want to get better. Um, so they've been very receptive to just, you know, adding on to their tools and what they have. Talk about some of the players. Let's start with the pitching staff that you've noticed over the pitchers. What has stood out about the pitching staff? We've got a mix. I mean, we've got, you know, spinny lefties high velo you name it um I think you know they they complement each other well and I think um you know just based on the fall I think there's some high expectations from the pitching staff everybody's back um so I'm excited to see them kind of use their craft and and work together as a staff to to have a great season offensively uh what is stood out you mentioned you got a lot of returners back so what 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 has stood out to you? It's impressed you about the some of the returner there, the offense. Uh, it stands out. Coach Dan likes to run a lot, a lot of speed, mm -hmm. but they have power as well. What has what has stood out about the offense? Yeah, we can hit the ball hard. Um, that's been fun. You know, I love throwing BP and just giving up as many home runs as I can. And we can hit the ball hard and we can hit the ball far. So um, and even just seeing some of our new freshmen come in and just jump right into the system like I just I think it's very exciting times ahead for Indiana and uh, I just I think this group for the next few years is just going to stay really strong who are some names that Hoosier fans uh, should keep a, a remember here as they get ready for the season once it gets to February maybe even some softball fans that maybe don't follow Indiana on a daily basis that might make some noise uh, this upcoming season I mean yeah we've got two returning All-Americans Taylor Minnick and Bree Copeland so I think they're definitely going to have a big year again um, but just, you know, our, our lefty in the circle, Heather Johnson, just her craft and just keeping hitters off balance. Um, and I just I think we've got some some young studs and our freshman Alex Cooper, who uh, I, I'm excited to see her career unfold. But um, all around, I mean, Sarah Stone, you name it, like we've got a lineup top to bottom who just can hit the ball and just the experience. And I'm excited to see them do some big things. I can sense that in your voice <laughs> that you I mean, this is I'm wondering when you were looking into this job, did you study the personnel in advance or did you wait until you you know after the job and you started kind of digging in on the roster i'm always interested with coaches do they do you, do you look at what you're you know you're going into from a roster standpoint before taking the job or are you just looking more of the big picture of the university and the staff um i i think i definitely looked more in the staff just to see kind of where i fit in with the hitting pitching role um, I knew they had a great season because I did follow Indiana. Like I've always kind of followed, you know, honestly, Indiana schools. Um, so I knew they had a great season. I knew they were turning a lot of people, but that was probably my, my second thing that I, I looked at after accepting the job is then I kind of dove into the roster. And that was honestly when I realized, oh my goodness, like these girls are back and, and their numbers are incredible. Um, so I kind of knew I was like, this is going to be a great year. Let's talk a little bit about your career and your path. Uh, you were a standout All-American in North Carolina. Let's first start. How did you get decide to play softball as a young uh, as a youngster there? What got you into softball? I don't know. I mean, I just signed up at a local rec league and I loved it. I mean, I just I always preferred it over every other sport. Um, it's just something I that grew natural to me, and uh, I just I had the most fun playing at a young age. You ended up going to North Carolina. How did you end up going to uh, co play for Coach Papa? Um, I think they saw me in a tournament in Florida. Um, obviously, being a Hoosier, I was a big basketball fan. 
Um, so, you know, the name Michael Jordan definitely weighed heavy on my mind when I was like, oh my goodness, I could go to UNC. Um, but just when I, once I got to campus and coach Papa is amazing in the school, I I just fell in love with it. What was your reaction when uh, you heard about her retirement uh, news there? Honestly, I'm, I'm really happy for her. I think, um, you know, she deserves it and all her vacations coming up is just well-earned. Um, she had an amazing career. She's an amazing human being. Um, and I just, I'm really happy for her and just the career she had. Describe the type of player that you were. I was very competitive. Um, you know, I just figured out ways to get it done, whether it was hitting or pitching. Um, I, I worked really hard because I had to um, and just kind of my development over the four years has kind of helped me get to where I was and just building that work ethic and figuring out what I needed to do to be successful. So if coach Kendra Kirkhoff was coaching Kendra Lynch, the player, uh, how would that go? Would that fit? Would that be work? How would that be? <laughs> I think it would fit. I think at times I would probably have to tell me to, you know, change my face and look, <laughs> work on my attitude a little bit, but um, all things that help me understand what's important as a coach. Um, I definitely think back as a player, I was like, oh my goodness, I used to do that. Like, I can't believe I would do that. Or um, some things that I thought was good that I did as a player, but I think it would fit for the most part. You mentioned, obviously, you're an All-American player in North Carolina. Do you have some, what's your favorite moments as a player during your time there? Um, I think overall, you know, I hit a couple of walk-off home runs, which were fun. Um, but I think we played against Georgia. That probably stands out the most. Uh, it was just in a midweek matchup, but Georgia was ranked in the top 10. Um, and I pitched and I hit a home run and we beat them two to one in extras. And it was pretty awesome. Just for me, that was probably my best overall game as a two-way player. Um, so that probably stands out the most. You hit 52 home runs uh, during your time at North Carolina. Uh, and like I said, you're an All-America your last year. You drove in 168 runs. Uh, you won a ton of games. You won 45 games in your pitching career. It's, it's two-way. Was Were you always a two-way player? Is that, just take me through that mindset of being a two-way player. Because sometimes when you get to college, they'll say, well, you got to be either a pitcher or a hitter. But, you know, you just – you, they, they coach Papa let you play both. So just take me through that mindset of being a two-way player. Yeah. So I think actually my intentions when I got to school was more so hitting. Um, I was just more of a relief pitcher, like a small role pitcher early on, um, which I was fine with. Um, you know, I, I wanted to hit more and that was more important to me. Um, so I played outfield and I hit mainly um, my first two years. And then my junior year is when I kind of, you know, just some circumstances, I took over more in the pitching role. Um, so that was just something, you know, I would just keep doing bullpens and she was very open to just my role as a pitcher, um, which was great, but I was always going to be a hitter there. Um, that's what I was the most passionate about, but uh, just circumstances changed and I just had to kind of take over a pitching role in a lot heavier way um, later on in my career, which was fine. Um, so she was, she was very open and I mean, it worked out and I loved it. So I was going to say, how do you compare pitching versus hitting? Did you have one favor over the other where they, I mean, how do you compare the, you know, the excitement of having, you know, being a pitcher versus being a hitter? Um, I loved hitting. That was definitely my, my first passion was hitting. Um, but pitching's just been always so intriguing to me of just, there's so many ways to do it. There's so many things you can do. You know, you don't have to throw 70 to be successful. Um, just the spin and the craft you can have. So that kind of intrigued me a lot early on from a coaching standpoint of just how I can make that better. Um, so that's kind of how I switched that role of like, I wanted to get more into pitching because I was very interested in just developing pitching and how that, you know, there's so many ways to do it and just, you know, making other people with craft. What actually you finished your career at 2017, but you got into coaching. Tell me about that decision-making. Were you always interested in coaching? Did, did it just kind of play out? What, what got you into coaching? You know, I wasn't really sure in college, like early on what direction I wanted to go. Um, but then I think as I got later into my college career, I was just like, I just don't see myself doing anything other than this. Um, I loved it. I loved playing my time there. Like, I was just like, I think this is for me. And my coaches agreed. They were like, I think you'd be great at it. 
Um, so it was kind of early in my senior year when I was just like, this is definitely the direction I want to go. And that's kind of when I reached out to, you know, just some schools about volunteer or GA, like, you know, I wanted to get my master's. I knew I wanted to go that route, but then just kind of to see where my opportunities were. You end up at Florida State. You helped mm -hmm. Coach Alameda. You're on that staff. Uh, what is it, GA? Was that the official? What was your official title? Uh, I was technically the volunteer, but I got my master's while I was there. Yeah, I think that's pretty impressive. I think we need to <laughs> highlight that. <laughs> a volunteer grad assistant, uh, but you were part of that national championship, 2018. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Oh, that was a indescribable experience for sure. Um, that staff's amazing. Uh, they, you know, opened me in, opened me with open arms, and it just was, it was really fun to be a part of that staff and to learn from them. Um, they're brilliant and just kind of their high level thinking and. You know, it was tough competing against them for four years. So just kind of getting to see the other side and, and, you know, just how she developed her culture and this the relationship with her players. Um, that was definitely a big thing that I have tried to take with me moving forward. It's a great point. That was a Carolina FSU. It was a big rivalry there. Mm -hmm. uh, so now you're joining them. What was that like in adapting there uh, to those Garden and Gold? But then you're next thing you know, you're in Oklahoma City. Yeah, it was definitely, you know, fun and we would tease each other and just get our jokes in. Um, just, you know, I unfortunately never beat Florida State in my career and they did not forget that. So um, that was, you know, just fun jokes to be had, but um, they were awesome. And just the learning experience I got from them was just unbelievable. Yeah, who's who's who teased you the hardest? Was it like Travis Wilson? Was it Craig Snyder was on the staff at the time? Was it Lonnie, Coach Lonnie? I would was say it? probably Travis. That's nah, not a surprise. That's yeah. not a surprise <laughs> to anybody there. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. So you obviously spend the year in Florida State. Next thing, you know, you go up to UCF. Mm -hmm. uh, the bad news for you is that's where you met me. But the good news <laughs> is you had some success there as well. Just talk about the move to UCF and uh, being on Coach Ball Malone's staff who had just gotten there mm -hmm. uh, from Boise State. Yeah, I mean, you know, that was a big step for me, just my first official, you know, job as a coach. Um, so I think that was very memorable in the sense of I learned so much just so quickly, um, just kind of taking on new roles in the bullpen and figuring out, you know, there's so much more to coaching than just being on a field um, and just kind of getting getting that understood and just you know what all goes into it so that was definitely a huge learning moment for me and it was it was awesome and I learned so much from that staff and you know the things we did in three years was was awesome just in in that short amount of time I was there but um that I mean I just that's kind of where I got my feet wet and just figured out what was important to me as a coach and and you know was able to kind of establish who I wanted to be as a coach yeah it was part of the staff UCF made the NCAA tournament 2021. They got to go to Tallahassee. So it was kind of like a full circle moment oh, yeah. for you. What was it like to be in the regionals there with UCF going into Tallahassee, a place that you have been there the year before? I mean, now you've, you could say you've been worked under Coach Ball Malone and obviously the success of UCF you've seen, Coach mm -hmm. Alameda. Uh, you're, that's a pretty good resume there. Yeah, most definitely. Um, it, it was fun. I mean, you know, I, you know, Tallahassee is always a special place in my heart too. And so like, it was fun going back to that regional, um, you know, I think at the time for UCF, I think Florida state was always just a dagger of like, oh, we have to play them again. You know, like they're just always tough games and um, same with Florida, just, you know, just beating the the power five in state is tough. So I think um, once, you know, we just had to get over the, like, you know, we can beat power five teams and as we're developing and we had a great team. Um, so that was a fun regional to be a part of, but and, and very competitive one. So you, you've been around a lot of great pitchers. Obviously, Aaliyah White, you got to work with at UCF. She's now an assistant at North Georgia, national champion. I mean, what was it like working with her and seeing her development? Oh, she's awesome. Uh, she's an amazing human being. Um, just just wanted to be the best. Was so open to learning and just just as competitive as it gets, um, you know, she just, she was a workhorse and she was fun to be around in the bullpen. Um, just her energy, her leadership, uh, she's just second to none as a human. Um, so I've been super proud to watch Aaliyah just, you know, do what she does best. And that's just, you know, she is meant to coach and be around other players and teach them what she knows because she's brilliant and she had an awesome career. And I'm really glad I got to be a small part of it. You end up going down to UNC Greensboro. Get them to the NCAA tournament, coach. What was it like working for Coach Brenneman 
and getting that pro winning that SOCON getting to the NCAA. Yeah, I mean, Coach Brenneman is amazing. She's just I'm so blessed to be with awesome human beings, but um she was great. Um, you know, UNCG, like I said, was super special to me. Like I had my daughter there and just the way she, you know, welcomed just my family was just amazing. Um, so just kind of starting that chapter of my life in Greensboro, um, I just couldn't be more thankful for. Um, but just, I mean, man, she's just has a history of success and, and she was awesome to just be a part of that program. Um, we had a, a very young staff last year, um, a new staff and just their willingness to learn and just buy into, you know, we need each other and just, you know, who's better matchups here. Like they were just so bought in and it was just so easy to work with. And, and I think that was evident when, you know, we could go to regionals and just how we got there. What, what did you learn from each stop uh, that you had as a coach that you are now have applied as a coach moving forward to Indiana and beyond? Yeah. So, I mean, I think at Florida state, just the, like the relationship piece of just, man, like they've got it figured out how to build a culture and the relationships with their players and just, they, they've got it. And it's, that was special to, to watch and learn from. Um, and I think at UCF, I think I really figured out, you know, what type of coach am I like, like what is important to me as a coach and and what do I want my foundation to be, you know, pitching, hitting. Um, so like, that was very important to me. Um, and I think just at UNCG, just being a part of the successful program who, you know, they've been winning and just what does that look like? How do you maintain it? Um, and just getting girls to buy in and just, you know, everybody there loves the program and um, just, you know, it was just fun to be a part of just such success. And when we're expected to win, what does that look like? And and how do you coach it? So Coach Paul Malone was a two way player, all American like you were. So mm -hmm. she, you know, she was involved on both sides. How much did that help you figure out? how to coach all aspects of the game uh, from that perspective, seeing it from a head coaching role. Because she and both her and Coach Alameda have both told me separately that you're a future head coach in waiting, that uh, that's your future. Now, you're still very young, so I'm not going to ask you about the head coaching stuff because you're still young there. But how much did that also help you there envision, hey, I could do a little bit of everything as a coach, and you know, if I do become a head coach down the road, this is what it's like to be involved in all aspects of the game. Oh, for sure. It was so helpful. And it was a huge part of why I wanted to take the job. I was like, we're so similar in ways. Um, I think it could it like, it made sense. And just, you know, seeing, you know, I think she's got a brilliant mind and she knows the game. Um, so just watching her make moves and pieces of a lineup, like, I mean, it was just like, wow. And that's where I think I just got such a strong base of understanding of, you know, like, this is what I would want to do, how I want to do it. And just understanding, you know, all parts of the games and, seeing how she maneuvers a practice and kind of stuff was, was great to be a part of. What have you learned so far? What have you picked up from coach Stanton and her style? Oh, she's awesome. Um, you know, she is so organized and she knows what she's about. And I think that is just, you know, she's got such a structure for Indiana softball and who she is as a coach. Um, and I think just, you know, being a part of that system and just, you know, I have means to just go in and learn just on, you know, on, website she has and just like learn new drills and how we you know do this with the swing and just you know what that looks like is she's just she's she's got it figured out and she knows what she's about and she knows who she stands for um and I just think she's such a strong person and I think in those ways alone she's already made me a better person and just you know confident in who I am and just the direction I want to go um so this has just been an amazing first few months here um just with this staff because they're just incredible What's it like being in the Big Ten in a major conference here? Uh, you know, and by the way, it, it's a league. It's got a lot of assistant coaches that have very uh, great playing careers. I mean, I'm thinking of Amanda Chittisters and over mm -hmm. in Michigan, a Laura Trout, for example, at Illinois is an associate head coach. I mean, yourself now at Indiana, you know, Shanda Bell is a mm -hmm. Hall of Famer at Kentucky. I mean, that's a pretty competitive, right. it's a pretty competitive conference when it comes to those assistants there. Mm -hmm. No, I'm excited to be in the Big Ten. You know, I, I grew up watching the Big Ten and and I'm I'm proud to be in it. And, you know, I think the Big Ten is only getting stronger. And I think just watching all these teams, like I think we're gonna have a very competitive league. And then, you know, joining the the four joining next year. Um, I, I think the Big Ten's the place to be. I think there's a lot of good softball coming. So I'm very excited to be a part of it.
I got to know your dad during your time at UCF because he would travel to almost every home game. And it was cool because he was my go-to guy for college basketball scores while we were on <laughs> softball field. And I'll never forget one Saturday in particular, the rivalry day where North Carolina is playing Duke mm-hmm. and Indiana is playing Purdue, and he's watching both. Yep. Uh, so just describe that for the family because I don't – that was the thing that kind of blew me away is that you all had ties to, obviously, Indiana, so I knew that. Uh, mm-hmm. So when I heard that you went to IU, I wasn't as surprised because of that. But at the same time, you also are Tar Heel Blue from your playing career, and you got you know hooked into the Carolina. So what's it like to – now you're basically got Tar Heel colors, you got Indiana blood, and basketball, two monster basketball you know, programs like Indiana and North Carolina. I love it. I mean, you know, I love basketball and it's just, you know, I grew up watching it and, and just being all about it. So I think this is the most exciting um, because I'm always going to follow my heels and just want them to, to always win. But now having the opportunity, I get to go back to assembly hall, you know, just the historic basketball gym and like, just be a part of that history and tradition. I'm like, this is about as good as it gets um, as far as the basketball fan goes. And then, you know, Chanda and I get to tease each other because, you know, she's Kentucky basketball. And then we get to, get to throw that in and just have some fun with it. So no, it's been great. <laughs> it's a great point because she's similar to you in that she came from Kentucky. <laughs> great, Pat, but that's a bigger rivalry. You know, Kentucky yeah. and Indiana, it's a huge rivalry. In fact, they're going to renew that mm-hmm. over there. So she talked about how that's a little awkward because she's got, a, you know, she's IU and she's Kentucky at the same time. Uh, did you go to Indiana games when you were young? Um, not a ton. I just watched them, you know, I watched them growing up. Um, ironically enough, my family was more Purdue. Um, so That's like right. when I was watching oh. the games, he was a big Purdue fan. So, um, you know, just, we were kind of a split family in, in that way with IU and Purdue growing up. So I just, I got a little bit of both. <laughs> Who was the Purdue fan? Who was on the Purdue side? My dad and my brother. Has that changed now? Have you given them the orders to that's enough? Of that you know, they're still going to love Purdue, but they're oh. very, very, very happy for me and just wouldn't want me anywhere else. So they're they're very proud of me and just happy that I'm at IU. Oh, well, they can't ask you for tickets then for basketball game then if that would add it. They know they're not allowed to get that oh. if, if right. they're going <laughs> to. What? Uh, uh, so. Have you been, uh, what's it going to be like for you? Because I'm assuming you're going to go to Assembly Hall oh, yeah. at some point this year. Kind of like you used to go there at the Dean Dome for mm-hmm. North Carolina games. I've, I think you've been, You did you go to a Cameron for a North Carolina Duke game th- during that time period at all or not? Um, I went to Cameron not for basketball. I was in there for other sports, but I went to UNC Duke games at Carolina. Oh, you got better. Man, I'm envious right now. I'm a little envious. <laughs> But what's it like? Because not many people can say that. These are like two, these places I'm describing are bucket list places <laughs> in college athletics, not just basketball. Mm-hmm. And you're experiencing that. Yeah. I mean, I think that I'm very lucky. Um, I, I'm very excited to get to Assembly Hall and just kind of experience, you know, the largest student section in the country and just, you know, people in Indiana are crazy about their basketball. And I'm just, I'm excited to be a part of it. Um, you know, basketball is, is second to softball for me. So, like, we're just – my family is very excited to be a part of it now. Damn. All right. Well, just as long as he wears IU colors at the softball time. Oh, he will. He okay. absolutely will. All right. <laughs> Otherwise, you tell him I'm going to get be mad disappointed. Okay. You recently – obviously, you're a mom now. You you told me off the air, two years old. My goodness, time flies. Yes. How has that changed you and, 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 and kind of, you know, affected from a coaching standpoint moving forward? Yeah, you know, uh, my daughter is my most important thing and just taking care of her and being there for her is is number one. And, you know, I'm at a place where I can do that. Um, and so just, you know, I, I pick her up, I drop her off and I think, you know, I'm still able to get my stuff done, which is great. Um, so just, I think that's just finding the right fit that, you know, like I can have both. And, and again, Sean has just been amazing with just understanding the value of, of a family and in this profession. Um, you know, it's, it's always going to be hard, but just, and, you know, being around a support system is just, this is just the most ideal, I think, for raising my family um, just in this environment, because everybody's just been awesome. What are you looking forward to the most of this time here at Indiana as a coach? As you could, I mean, like I met, you're still very young in this, mm-hmm. uh, even though you've accomplished a lot, as we've mm-hmm. covered here, you're still very young. Uh, what are you hoping this chapter of your coaching career brings to you? Yeah, I think just continuing to develop the success of Indiana, um, just, 
get NIU back on the map as a powerhouse program, um, you know, and just, just continuing to develop and, and, you know, like get the best kids to come to Indiana, like, and just show them how awesome of a place it is to be. Um, and just the tradition and the values there. Um, and just, you know, why it's so important to stay, you know, stay in Indiana and just be a part of your flagship school. And just, you know, for just other kids to just see the importance of how truly amazing it is to be a Hoosier and how, you know, honored you would be to play there. Being back in the state of Indiana, how has it been? It's been awesome. Um, you know, I, I feel like you don't know what you don't have until you don't have it. And I think just being back here just helps remind me of what's important to me. And just, you know, it's been a while since I've been back in Indiana. And I think just the pride of I made it back and, you know, my family's back and just, you know, not wanting to leave now. Does it feel like you never left or has the, or is it, or is it, has it changed Has the state, you know, is there things like, wow, this is different than it was when I was here last time. Or is it the opposite? It's like, wow, it's like, it's like almost never left. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's closer to never having left, you know, I think in ways it's grown, which has been great, especially even like just softball in general and the state has grown. Um, but you know, the, all the good things I remembered about Indiana are still here and which, which is exciting. And, um, you know, just even spending more time in Bloomington than I have just seeing how absolutely beautiful the town is, the people and how fun it is to be in Bloomington specifically. Um, so I think, you know, my, my love for Indiana is just growing, um, cause I'm getting to see a little bit more of it than I did, you know, growing up. Well, I'm excited for you. I'm glad you're back in the home state. Uh, I'm glad you're back. We're part of that staff. I'm a fan of that staff. And my last question is what's going to be the keys for this team? to accomplish your eternal goals and continue that momentum from last year once you get going here in 2024? Yeah, I think just continuing the leadership and moving in the right direction. Um, I think just, you know, if they don't get so blindsided on the now and just continue to see the bigger picture and what our goal is, um, you know, we have we have a high end goal that we want to achieve. And I think as long as we just keep moving in the right direction together, I think that's attainable. That's assistant coach Kendra Kirkhoff, Indiana, joining us here at In the Circle. Good to get you finally on the show. It's been a while. You know, we, we've no, been always trying you. to figure this out. Uh, <laughs> but we've always connected because uh, I I grew up like in North Carolina and Indiana in basketball. So I, I can relate to that conflict you've got now. But, uh, hey, I'm so happy for you, excited for you. Uh, send my best to the family and the staff. Uh, good luck this upcoming season, and we'll definitely uh, be in touch. Sounds good. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.